and welcome to another episode of the Plutonium Bunny. The great people at MEL Chemistry sent me a starter box with the VR lenses and two subscription boxes to review. So I thought I would do a short video review and then also demonstrate them on my channel. Ta-da! Looks like there is an instruction booklet. This looks pretty good. There's some, they have some really great photography in their kit. And it looks like there are some good kits, some good instructions, just basic safety precautions, the uses of various different items. And it looks like this does a fairly good job of explaining how to use the kit give support information. I believe they're actually based in England, so that's kind of interesting. US-based YouTube channel. Ah, the periodic table. Very nice. This appears to be the sort of table for doing your experiments on so you don't get your table messy. Ooh, and there are the goods. So it looks like there's some good syringes. Wow, these are big. Oh, yes. The Erlenmeyer flask and a funnel. This should be good for some fun experiments. And what is this weird thing? Oh, this must be the included portable burner. So I think it goes like this. Then maybe this part goes on top. So it probably goes something like that. I believe they've included solid fuel hexamine in the kit for using as kind of a Bunsen burner replacement. Perhaps it's safer than having gas. They've got ah, two pairs of safety glasses. You can have an observer also watching your fun experiments. Here is their smartphone stand. Regrettably, I don't have a smartphone to use with it, but we'll make do. Looks like plenty of beakers. Oh wow, this is nice. So there's lots of disposable beakers so you don't have to clean out your beakers once you get them completely covered in gunk. This nice little beaker and these look fun. So we have two hole, one hole, and solid stoppers. These things are really great. You can use them for distillations, for gases, all sorts of great experiments. This should be fun. And the last little thing here. Oh, that looks fancy. Ah, this must be the smartphone macro lens. I will have to try using that. Let's take a look at the first experiment kit they gave me. So this looks like something with tin chemistry. Uh, I have to say their packaging is quite superb. Things are really well packaged. They aren't going to break. They aren't going to jingle around. So I gotta say, that's something they did quite well. Nice, easy to read instructions. So these don't give a whole lot of background about what the experiment is doing. But perhaps that's online somewhere? It looks like there's a little bit of information online to learn more about the experiment. So that's good. The experiment instructions seem simple, but maybe you can learn more about the actual chemistry and what's going on behind the scenes online. So in the kit, it looks like they gave us a lot of small sort of sets of experiment chemicals so you can try things multiple times. So we've got some tin chloride, sodium bisulfate, very nice. Then here is more of the same. Alligator clips for doing electrochemistry. What are these? Maybe these are some sort of droppers. Ah, the petri dish. Oh, fancy, they even gave gloves. And it looks like these are the metals. So there's some zinc for doing the displacement and liquid soap. We'll have to find out what that's for. What else? 
So it looks like this is the experiment card again. And some good warnings. What I really like about this is everything's prepackaged and ready to go. You don't have to mess around with measuring things, finding the right chemicals, or even, heaven forbid, making your own chemicals. It's just all there and ready to go. So you can do your chemistry without trying to work around details such as reagent purity and all that stuff. So let's get started with the experiment. Chemistry of Monsters. <laughs> Let us see what is inside. Uh, so what is this doing? Ooh. That looks very fun. Hexamine. So we've okay. got sodium bicarbonate and hexamine. Now, if I recall correctly, hexamine can be turned into a powerful explosive with a four-letter abbreviation. Hmm, that sounds very fun. Oh, what are these? These must be the thermochromic stickers for sticking on your kind of Bunsen burner substitute so that you can tell when your beakers or burner are hot and you don't burn yourself. That looks very weird. We'll have to find out what that's for in the experiment. Some heavy-duty aluminum foil. Paper? Hmm. I am sufficiently intrigued. We'll have to get started. Almost forgot to show off the experiment cards. So, the first experiment looks like it is burning sugar to make a snake. Sounds fun. And this is burning sugar again. Ah, looks like we're adding ash to help it burn. So a lot of combustion and making some weird formations with combustion products.
Okay, so, wrapping up. What did I like about this kit? Well, it was really easy to use. There was really little prep time, and so you could just jump right into the experiment. And I really enjoyed that because I didn't have to mess around with getting out beakers and whatnot. I could just jump right into the science. And that, I think, is a great positive. They also have a great website with very detailed information on the kits, so I was wrong before when I said they didn't have much info about the actual science. They have very detailed information about the science, and I think their website is a really great resource for learning alongside the experimentation. In terms of negatives, there really aren't many. The sugar snake didn't quite go as planned, and the hexamine didn't quite fill the mold. Perhaps there was too little hexamine or too large a mold. The day was a little bit windy, so it was difficult to light, but overall I would say it worked. So just be aware that your mileage may vary when using this kit. Just as a general wrap up, I would say that this kit is real chemistry, not kitchen chemistry. It's not baking soda and vinegar, you get real chemicals and you're doing real, meaningful experiments. There are actually two experiments I did not try. I am leaving those for you to discover for yourself. In the future, however, I will be doing a variant of the tin dendrites experiment where I will grow crystals of tin similar to my copper crystals. Stay tuned!